Windsor, Ontario, Canada is a fantastic place to live. People are moving here from all over Ontario and Canada and the world, if I'm honest. I get calls from everywhere. So this video is going to go over my most frequently asked questions. One of them is safety. Is Windsor safe? Especially being close to, to, to Detroit. Is there stuff going on there? Also, how much is rent? We're actually going to look at apartment buildings that I would rent if I was looking to rent right now. Uh, and then also, what else am I asked a lot? Oh, schools. Yeah, people are always worried about the schools. Are they good compared to Toronto schools? Are my kids going to get a good education? What are they like? We'll go over all that on the way. I am a real estate agent in the Windsor area. I know this place uh, like the back of my hand. And the cool thing is there are, are 10 magic numbers you can put into your phone and it'll connect you to me. Crazy. I know. Uh, I get calls and texts from YouTube all the time. I'm on WhatsApp as well if you want to reach out. Um, I can help you relocate to this area if you're looking to purchase a property, okay? Okay, question number one. Doesn't Windsor have a high unemployment rate? So this one is interesting because you gotta be really careful when reading headlines because stuff like this is designed to get you to click on it. Uh, it's not really true on the same level. You gotta talk to a local or read the whole article to maybe put it in context. The region's largest employer, the Windsor Assembly Plant, has also been idled for retooling since September, with the retooling putting nearly a combined 6,000 workers on layoff. And then it says, we're in this temporary pause phase. So those people are not actually unemployed. Here's the thing, this place right here hires thousands of people. And every once in a while, they wanna renovate the factory so they can make even more cars in the future. When they do that, Everyone there goes on temporary layoff. They're not unemployed. Like, they're not out there looking for jobs and printing resumes and handing them out. There is not 6,000 new people looking for jobs in Windsor. Those people still have a job. They're coming back in two months. But in the meantime, they'll take unemployment and they'll spend some time with the kids. So when you see the unemployment statistics for Windsor go from below provincial average to 8%, that's not really reflective of how many people are unemployed. That's a very misleading statistic. The truth is the opposite. Windsor has a lot of job creation going on right now. I've blabbed on and on in other videos about the Gordie Howe International Bridge, which is almost complete. That's jobs just to build it. It's also going to bring more jobs here once it's complete, connecting the 401 directly to the U.S. interstate system. Also, uh, you got the uh, mega hospital coming in the future. You've got the uh, Next Star electric vehicle battery plant being built, and there is some information out there that more electric vehicle jobs are coming to Windsor in the future, but it's not really public knowledge yet. It's all hush-hush right now, so we'll see if that turns into anything down the road. The truth is, there's a lot of stuff going on here right now. There's a lot of growth and, um, and a lot of jobs being created in the Windsor area. Coming up, how much is rent and where would I personally be renting? if I was in the market to, to rent a place. We'll actually talk about specific buildings on the way. First though, for those people from other countries, I get this question. Is Windsor a multicultural city and will I feel welcome? Okay, listen, uh, nothing says I've never been to Windsor, like a question like that. Oh my lord, yes, Windsor is a very multicultural city. In fact, we have a festival every year that is literally just about multiculturalism. It's called the Carousel of Nations. And each ethnicity has like a, uh, a, a, a not, I was going to say a booth, but it's more than a booth. Sometimes it's a complete like hall that they rent out or an area where they'll have music and performances and food. Food's the big deal here. And honestly, like every ethnicity you can think of is involved in this from like Indian and Middle Eastern, Pakistani, Jamaican, uh, Scottish, Bavarian, like everyone, everyone does this. And the food's the big deal. So you go there and you try their food and it's delicious and you have a good time. And then the next day you go to a different place because it's all over the city and it lasts for a whole week. It's a big deal. Also, Windsor has a very large international student population. For years, they, uh, international students have been coming here and then when they graduate, they usually get jobs in this area and stick around. So just through that alone, uh, our multiculturalism has been growing in the Windsor area. Question number three, how much is rent in Windsor? This is a big deal for even if you want to buy a house, a lot of you have to rent first to get grounded and get your job and get going before you get approved for a mortgage. So we're going to look at places that I personally would rent. 
For one bedroom apartments, look up TerraCorp. Okay, so this is a property management company. They have a few large buildings in the area. They're managed pretty well. Most of them will have a live-in property manager that lives on the on, on the site, and they're pretty helpful. And they just renovated like most of their buildings are all torn down to the studs and redone. All right, so like look at this one right here. This is beautiful. This is a beautiful place, and they're large too for a one bedroom. This is, this is around 1600 bucks a month, and it's over here in Riverside. Riverside is a nice area of Windsor, so uh, that's a whole lot better than living in over here or near the university. They have two bedrooms for just under $2,000 a month, and I know that's still kind of expensive, but Canada is a crazy economy. Uh, it's kind of broken, and uh, that's what a place that looks that nice goes for. If you do need cheaper than that, on the west side of Windsor, you can find like one or two bedroom apartments for 1200 bucks a month or maybe a little bit more than that for a two bedroom um just be careful of the area so like city center if you click city center on google maps it shows you this right here the tall condos are okay because they're security they have concierge they might be really nice inside they have covered underground parking all that stuff but around here there's houses and stuff i wouldn't really be too interested in renting a house in that area it's there's a lot of drug addicts and stuff wandering there from downtown i would just i would avoid it if you need a full house, you're looking at 1900 bucks to like uh, 2200 probably for a two-bedroom or a small three-bedroom. Uh, you're probably still going to be more. You can be up to 2700 bucks, really, 25 to 27 if it's a really nice three-bedroom, okay? So anywhere in there, uh, but I would say starting at 1900 for a home with a little yard and everything. Here's one here in, uh, in, in East Windsor, which I would recommend if that's kind of your budget. It rented for this much money. Okay, this was three bedrooms. And this guy here, this was two bedrooms, and this is how much it rented for. Okay, is there crime in Windsor? A lot. Uh, we will talk about that. That's coming up. First, though, I got this question here a lot. How much does a house cost in Windsor? As you know, this is like my bread and butter. This is what I do for a living, okay? I do nothing but talk about housing prices in Windsor and in, in, in London both, okay? So let's dive in here. If you want a house like this, kind of like those rental ones we were just looking at, uh, small, really small, but uh, you know, a pretty safe, quiet area, you're looking in the 400s, uh, probably 450 or more if it's really nice. That's right now. Honestly, the prices keep kind of changing as they do. Uh, so if you're in the future and you need more updated information, feel free to call me. Again, that's my number on the screen. I do do this for a living. Um, but let's move on. So if you want like 1960s homes, the other one was like 1940s, 1950s. If you want 1960s brick little ranch like this, now you're talking 500 to 600 K depending on is there a garage and how nice does it look inside? Okay. So this here, I'm showing you a few different examples of what they look like and what you can get in this area. Now, if you go to post millennium, um, like modern homes like this, like these raised bungalows, these raised ranches like this, these are all going to be around the $700,000 mark, okay? And they, again, like the nicer they are, the more money it'll be, depends on how they've been maintained. But you can bet seven hundred k is kind of where you're going to be. And finally, modern two stories like this, uh, you're going to go $850,000 or more. And these can go all the way up to $1.1 million if they're newer and they're really nice. Okay, last question. Is there a lot of crime in Windsor? People want to know, like, if I'm moving from Toronto or from out west or from wherever, is it going to be better in Windsor? Is it going to be safer? Since the current administration was elected, like, it's gone crazy in Canada. The crime rates have just gone straight up, it feels like. And people in Toronto, their cars are getting stolen. I mean, sold to, to, to the Middle East. It's, it's crazy. There's CBC News articles all about it. You can go watch them. Um... I got good news. Yes, Windsor is much safer. If you go to StatsCan, which is like the government body that tracks statistics and demographics and all that, uh, Windsor has less crime than most Ontario cities adjusted for population, so per capita. So incidents of violent crime per 1,000 people, or sorry, 100,000 people, Windsor was 13% below the provincial average. That's really good. I struggled to find another place that was that low below the provincial average, okay? So, like, Kitchener, for example, uh, was well above the Ontario averages. London was about tied with the provincial average. I guess London's a very average city for crime. Uh, and then somewhere like St. Catharines was lower than the provincial average, but only by 3%. It was worth 13% lower than the provincial average. Side note, uh, Brantford 
that was a mess. Okay, this is 59%. I don't know what's going on at Brantford, but their crime, their violent crime, is 59% higher than the provincial average. So the truth is, to get down into the nitty gritty here, if you look at this map of Windsor, so over here is LaSalle, and then over here is Tecumseh and Lakeshore. These are all separate cities, but they're they're um, sort of looked at as suburbs of Windsor. These are all extremely safe. Like, I never hear of anything going on in these, these areas. Like, these are very safe areas of Windsor. Also, South Windsor down here, that's pretty safe as well. That's a really nice area, uh, and you can get homes as low as 550 600,000 over in this area. Um, also over here in Riverside, it's not bad as well. It's also pretty safe. Okay, last but not least, I get this question. Of course, every mother wants to know, every father wants to know, how are uh, the schools in, in the, the, the Windsor area? So if you go to FraserInstitute.org, this is a nonprofit organization that actually ranks schools based on how students do on province-wide testing. So if you grew up here, you'll remember like grade three and grade six, I think it was. We had to do those big tests that everyone in Ontario had to do. EQAO, I think it was called. Those are the tests they're using, and they're ranking the schools based on how students do on those tests. I've spent a lot of time looking at this website for Windsor and London and other cities all throughout Ontario, and I gotta say, Windsor does really well. Very few communities has, has this many good elementary schools as, as Windsor does. Okay, let me show you something here. If you sort by all 3,036 schools in Ontario, um, Colchester North in Essex is ranked 19th out of over 3,000 schools. That's crazy. If you sort by just Essex County, the county that we're in, uh, there's a huge amount that are above the average. So anything over six is, is considered above average because six is the average rating. St. Joseph's and Bellwood are both in the top 100 schools out of the 3,000. That's very impressive. Um, and just so you know, LaSalle down here, this area, all the schools are good in LaSalle. You can't, it doesn't matter where you buy. You're going to be in a good school district, okay? If you want to do some homework yourself and you want to cross-reference school boundaries, like where you need to live and how they're ranked, uh, on FraserInstitute.org, you can use buskids.ca. That's the website that shows you in Windsor the school boundaries. So that's it. I hope that those help you. And if you have more questions, feel free to put them down below. I'll try and answer. Um, if you're looking to move to the Windsor area, you can also call me with questions. If you need help uh, finding a place to purchase or sell, uh, feel free to reach out. People call me all the time from YouTube. Look forward to hearing from you.